coast of Puerto Rico, there's an isolated island kingdom ruled by our distant relatives. Very distant. On Cayo Santiago, rhesus monkeys reign. But today, they're getting some visitors. Lori Santos and her team of researchers. The Yale cognitive psychologist has made a career out of studying monkeys. And while she spends most of her time on campus and in the classroom, where she recently won a top teaching award, her favorite place is Cayo. For me, at this moment, of just feeling completely at home. Like, my monkeys. That guy is checking me out. Lori wants to know what monkeys are thinking. And monkeys on Cayo Santiago are the perfect subjects. They were brought from Asia in the 1930s to populate the island for behavioral research. Originally, there were only 400. Today, more than 1,000 live here. It was this fabulous site for research. We know who's related to who. We know all the information about where males were born. We can get these big populations and really see variation in how the individuals interact and what they know about the world. Before Lori could understand their thoughts, she had to understand how things work on the island. Here's Josh, my buddy. Go get some food, bud. It's just like seeing old friends. Oh, look at you, you know, you grew up so well. Oh, you've been kidnapped, yay. You know. She has come to understand their monkey society, complete with insiders, outsiders, queen bees, and wannabes. There's six different social groups on the island. The groups can sometimes have tensions. The alpha group rules the island, and its members get first dibs at whatever they want, including the monkey chow humans feed them. They show their status at the feeding troughs. Beta groups hang back until the alpha group has had its fill. I see just a ton of monkeys who are just kind of waiting in the wings to get some. It's kind of scared. It's really like human nation states where access to resources is controlled by who you happen to be and what group you happen to be in. Lori's groundbreaking work on monkey behavior has gotten a lot of attention. But why spend all this time unraveling the monkey mind? I want to start my talk today with two observations about the human species. They give us a much broader window into the evolutionary history of humans. By studying monkeys, we can go back you know, 30, 40 million years, and you can really get at what they know about in the world in this way that's sometimes really pure. And while the human brain is larger, the monkey brain shares much of the same circuitry and features as ours. So they're related to us, but they aren't weighed down by our cultural baggage. These experiments can tell us about our shared history with not only monkeys and apes, but with other animals. But last time I checked, monkeys can't talk. So how does she ask them questions about what they know? She gives them tests. Some involve lemons others grapes, anything to catch their attention. As a child growing up in New Bedford, Massachusetts, Lori's attention was captivated by animals and people. I guess as a child I was sort of a budding anthropologist. So I was always kind of messing with human behavior and animal behavior to see how it worked. But she didn't only mess with animals. I think my brother felt like, you know, he was my experimental subject. So it was easy to kind of dress him up and make him do stuff on the video camera. All in the name of science. The biggest thing from my childhood that translates into what I do now is just a rich curiosity for people and how they work. It was both a curiosity and this urge to figure out ways to test it. Lori's curiosity paid off. The valedictorian got a scholarship to Harvard where she quickly found her niche when a professor showed her pictures of his research site, Cayo Santiago. And I was like, I'm going there. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, I've been going there ever since. Lori's been traveling there for nearly two decades, but one thing she noticed right away, monkeys are thieves. The lemons she used in some of her experiments kept disappearing whenever she looked away. And then you realize there's like some monkey running up the hill with the fruit. Humans know that stealing works only when no one sees you do it. Lori wondered if monkeys understood that too. For decades, the scientific community has debated if animals can understand what goes on in another's head. Like, does your dog know what you're thinking? Monkeys knowing to steal from you when you're not looking suggests that they do. But how could Lori prove it? She decided to find a monkey alone and bait him. 
were two human experimenters. Each of them had a grape, which monkeys think is absolutely delicious. Take kebab. Step. They then put the platform with the grape on the ground in front of them. Down. Up. Turn. The experimenters dressed and behaved identically, except one turned away and one faced the monkey. Lori knew that if the monkeys stole from the person turned away, it meant that they understood who couldn't see them. She tested over 100 monkeys and took data with her camcorder. And whom did they steal from? The person who's not looking. In fact, 90% of the time, they stole from the person who couldn't see them. So what the study tells us is that the monkeys are actually taking into account where a person's looking and using that to figure out what that person knows and what he doesn't know. It's a concept called theory of mind, and Lori's stealing study made headlines, proving that monkeys share at least one important aspect of it with us. And that's a really powerful mechanism that allows them to deceive others, to be tricksters and cheat, and they only do certain kinds of activities specifically the kinds of things they're not supposed to be doing when others can't see them. Like stealing food from each other, or mating with off-limits females in spots where high-ranking monkeys can't see them. Monkeys having the capacity to understand what others can see and know is an ability that humans use often, especially Lori, who's fond of observing her own species. I think one of the coolest capacities we have is to really take on what it means to be somebody else, how they think, how they make sense of the world, what they know. But how will understanding why monkeys behave the way they do affect us? We know lots about how our psychological mechanisms lead us astray. We know really little about where those mechanisms come from. Maybe some of the strategies we're using are evolutionarily old. Which means some of our behavior is ingrained in us and more difficult to change. But Lori thinks not impossible. And she's leading the charge to find out if we can change our own behavior in the future. If you think about how much we've learned in science about the tiniest particles out there or the biggest galaxies out there, right? we, know, we know how those things work. We still can't predict behavior. We just are just terrible at understanding ourselves. If we really want to understand humans and we really want to change our behavior, we have to understand how we work. And now, we'd like to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or join us at pbs.org slash novasciencenow. You can see any of these stories again, watch exclusive short videos, hear from experts, and check out our web-only series, The Secret Life of Scientists and Engineers. Well, that's our show. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time on Nova Science Now. Okay, dude, I need the bee suit.